the one who is seen or believes himself to be seen glances up, answers with a glance. To experience the aura of an appearance or a being means becoming aware of its ability to pitch, to respond to a glance. This ability is full of poetry. Walter Benjamin Hey Miriam, I recently had this date with a guy from Switzerland, a doctor, working for Doctors Without Borders. He's originally from Mexico. I guess I couldn't live in Switzerland even though I admire the mountains. I guess I would feel kind of trapped in the landscape. Since I grew up at the north coast of Germany, which, of course, has its own issues. We met in this hotel which faces the Spree, the river that runs through Berlin and which in Friedrichshain, Kreuzberg, separated East and West Berlin. The hotel opened a few months back and is in the same line with the East Side Gallery, the Instagrammable hotspot for wall tourism, cutting the river off from the East. We looked from the former East over to the West on a balcony with a front made of glass, wooden floor and walls made of concrete. I wonder if we perceive contact with other people kind of always as a surplus instead of our situatedness. As if contact is either something to spoil oneself with or a necessary inconvenience, like a border or a hotel. Cruising. This gay male form of relationships, instant relationships, can maybe add a perspective to the image of water for our conversation, beyond a cocky suggestion for which gay men are known. All this horniness and voicing, all this representation. I recently start to wonder whether representation is the most important tool we have, even though we need to hear everyone. The question is probably where these voices can be heard. Representation alone to me sounds like screaming, like a pool of singular voices in hope for recognition. But in this neoliberal setup, maybe the only way to push and create space. Cruising is a term, of course, not only used in queer sexuality, but also used for cruises with motor or sailboats, the leisure time travel over a body of water. There are two atmospheres in one word. The atmosphere of secrecy, anonymous queer encounters of instant intimacy in public places. And there's open out and about outdoor privacy. The cruisers belong to one group, other cruisers are more treated like neighbors. 
There's a hint of money ingrained in the word cruise. I see a sailor hat, a polo shirt, white teeth. I see a picnic basket, checkered tablecloths. In a way, I see the 50s. I can't finish a full thought yet that doesn't leave us only with a slogan. But I guess that for me, the body of water and its slow death, this material world that is so hard to hold, tells us a lot about how we live with one another. Back to the view over Berlin from the balcony. It is sad to see that Berlin, a city that has stories of collective wounds to tell, the merging of the East into the West as its most recent, is sucked up by a cruise, making the city a theme park one can participate in if one has the monetary means or is otherwise condemned to watch and like. Do we experience things secondhand? or second-eyed? Is it a kink one shares? And for whose pleasure? Looking forward to talk to you soon. Sebastian. Hey, Sebastian. A word, violence, lays on my table. Something that I noted down during our phone call. The appeal, desire for something violent, transgressive. It makes me think which kind of violence is more violent. Is it Aguamansa or a concrete river? According to Aguamansa, it was once the largest settlement between New Mexico and the Pacific coast, until in 1862 Flood left it a ghost town. The fall of 1861 was sunny and dry and warm until Christmas Day, but the year of 1862 was a year to be remembered by the settlers of the San Bernardino Valley. It was the year of the Great Flood, which culminated on the night of January 22nd and wrought great destruction and desolation. It rained continuously for 15 days and nights. The gentle Santa Ana River, that was their lifeblood, became a raging torrent, which washing, swirling and seething swept everything from its path. When morning dawned, it showed a scene of desolation. The village of Aguamansa was completely washed away, and where flowers bloomed and trees had been planted, a waste of muddy, turbulent water met the gaze. As a response, Santa Ana River was covered with concrete to prevent the flood that may appear once in a century. I remember seeking a nearby nature area. The blue line on a map triggered me. It was a hot day. I was the only one cycling amongst the cars. When I arrived at the river, its ghostly absence welcomed me with deadly silence. No flowing water, flora or fauna, but a man-made concrete desert. A body of water, presence in its absence. I looked up at the private houses and was thinking whether its inhabitants remember it miss it, think about it, violence in a shape of absence and silence. In my next letter, 
I will take you on a cruise from an ancient Eridanus river, also known as Baltic Sea, to the concrete river and back. Hey Mia, I'm still trying to grasp what cruising can tell us about the sea and the force of water or its absence. I have to think of Buddhism. According to it, desire and attachment are the most powerful human tendencies and emotions and responsible for our dualistic worldview. I want you. Fire makes up its natural element. The element associated with aversion, anger and hatred is water. I don't want you to be here. A dualistic gaze and the notion of an independent self are said to be the causes and effects of these emotions. where the elements are just a constant shift of energy with no story attached. Buddhism is often understood as a task of neglecting the outer world and one's own emotions. And I come to slowly grasp that the real task is stopping to identify as a self and understanding conditionality being with the experiences without the personal story attached or repeated. Derrida used an interesting phrase that I found to be a way to access one's situatedness, hospitality. Hospitality and hostility in one word. Like being with instead of being for a predetermined outcome. I never experienced a cruise on a private yacht or boat. No one of my friends has the money or heritage allowing that kind of boat. When I visited Riga on one of my trips to Stockholm, well, walking around in the city, I came across the Bremen musicians. The fairy tale of the animals going to Bremen to become a band. The same sculpture that stands in Bremen and is one of the main tourist attractions was here reproduced in 1990 by a Bremen artist, but with exhausted animals looking through the wall. In the beginning 13th century, a German bishop founded Riga and Christianized its citizens. These animals will find freedom from their former existence and be in a collective, a band, making music instead of animalistic noises, look tired after the long journey to Riga. Getting lost at sea, when neighbors become potential lovers. Hey Sebastian. I'm thinking of these kinds of maps, where the water bodies are more visible than the land. They stick out and have taken interesting shapes. The shape of Eridanos, also known as Baltic Sea and Concrete River, also known as Santa Ana River, like two dragons facing each other, thousands of miles apart, their tails curled, Limbs that have paws with long nails, forming a delta. It reminds me of the very end of Astrid Lindgren's Brothers Lionhearts, where the dragon, fire, and river monster, water, were after the brothers, but instead turned against each other. Fire and water created steam, deadly steam, that eventually kill them both. I was cycling at the bottom of the concrete river, all the way and until I reached the Pacific. 
around six miles journey from the place I lived down to the beach. The sand was being excavated to clean up an oil spill from a nearby oil tower. The air was full of mist created by the air pollution, but the sun kept gleaming through. Further on the ocean, I could spot the long row of large cargo ships idling there in the midst of water. It was autumn 2021. The corona pandemic was still showing its traces. Not enough workforce in L.A. Harbor, one of the world's biggest ports for trade, had caused several months' long queues. I was wondering how it might be for the crew members. Day after day, month after month, to stay in their tiny compartments while on the ocean. Engines running to preserve the quality of its cargo while not moving a mile. A space where the two types of violence, the transgressive and the silent one, will meet. Cruising and sailing. There is something about the spatial experience that asks for the same. The shadow, the corner, the unexpected, the sudden elevation and down to the negative space. You have to dare and know the coordinates and catch the wind. Old waves that have been traveling around the ocean for months, maybe years, push your sailing boat far with a single deep breath. Young waves that only have come to being some hours ago, are restless. They make the sailing boat vibrate nervously. I take a paper and a pen and start to follow the outskirts of the Baltic Sea. I try to fit this water body into the concrete river. It resists. It doesn't want to fit but I'm determined. It's violent. The 80,000 square kilometer dead zone at the Baltic seabed becomes disturbed. Down there the water is more saline and denser and therefore remains on the bottom, becoming isolated from the surface, waters and the atmosphere. But now the monster has opened its eyes as the layers of the sweet water are getting mixed up. Hey Mia. Our conversations are like a little free space from the tasks of my everyday in the new flat, as well as the new job. That provides me with the basic money, but takes up a lot of my time. all for the promise of time and space to film and write and have discussions about it. My mother would probably describe it as a naive and childish make-believe, and she is right. I don't push my lack of recognition to its full capacity, and I'm still kind of resistant in selling myself, with all the effects from not actively swimming in the mainstream. I lived for a very long time in Hamburg, the city has a very calming, nearly cold atmosphere. Its harbour, meanwhile, gives you the feeling of a possible travel and connects you thereby to the imagined outer world. The city calls itself the gate to the world. Berlin is built on a swamp. The water is in the city, under the city, has constantly been drained out of the city's grounds to stabilize buildings. I wonder if people always act according to their surroundings. Did I tell you that I once filmed the piers on the Hudson River in New York City? The river that divides New York City and New Jersey. It was a famous, infamous cruising spot throughout the 20th century 
photographed by several queer artists throughout time. I used an old Super 8 roller I found in our closet in art school. It was a very nostalgic moment, especially since I did it on the Pride weekend of the Stonewall Riot's 50th anniversary. I later developed it with a coffee solution. The thing is, until today I have no idea if the material was still fine and whether the development worked. In a way, I don't want to borrow a projector and see if the images came out right. In a former letter I mentioned this word from Derrida's thinking, hospitality, and I just wanted to mention it again. It is a concept that kind of haunts me and that gives shape to a very interesting question of relating, I think. The question, to Derrida, is rooted in the concepts of autonomy and dialogue. Kant had said that hospitality is a human right and Derrida wonders in his text about the concepts of host and guest which power relations are kept intact, what contract is signed by the guest to be provided with the service of the host. And who can't be host in this setup? Deconstruction as a tool to open up. And I'm thinking about the book Male Fantasies by Klaus Teweleit a German sociologist who analyzed in two books of each around a thousand pages the writings of the free corps man in between the world wars. These vigilante groups were made up of men traumatized by World War I who felt trapped in a country where they were the conquered and humiliated. To not lose themselves and their idea of erectness and strength Every sense of fluidity, abstractness, and therefore feminine or foreign had to be controlled and eliminated. In the letters, communism, femininity and weakness, abstractness, are considered the main threats to the strong German body. Softness or softening actions, identities and politics became one imagined weapon for unrooting the German identity. Fighting the flood. Looking forward to talk to you or read from you. Sebastian. Dear Sebastian, Yesterday I arrived in Mexico City a city built on deep, soft soil that was once the bottom of a mountain lake. A city of over 21 million inhabitants where the water is present in its absence. A city where water has been and is continuously pumped out. Xochimilco neighborhood being the last remnants of a vast water transport system built by the Aztecs. Earlier within the past month, I traveled to the delta of an ancient Eridanus river, to nowadays Copenhagen, a city of brackish water, where the sweet river water and the salty sea water meet and get mixed up. What does it mean to be an organism living in or acquiring brackish water? Thinking about the Baltic Sea region through a body of Eridanus River, told to be equal in scale to Amazon River in South America, helps me to imagine the region in its abundance. Multiculturalism freed from rigid understanding of separated nation-states or political imaginations dividing the continent into the East and West. It helps to reimagine Europe as an ecosystem making love with a body of water 
at times crying golden tears of amber from ancient tree resin from Scandinavian mountains that end up on the Baltic shores. Instead of a hotspot of accumulated wealth of colonial trades on expense of the global south and or Eastern Europe. Your last letter, a reflection on the free corpsmen in between the world wars, vigilant groups made up of men traumatized by the First World War that felt trapped in a country where they were conquered and humiliated. In their letters, communism, femininity and weakness are considered the main threats to the strong German body. Reminds me a current read by Thomas Hubel. When I went to Berlin for the first time, I was aware of a heavy energy present as a result of a collective wound. Though its scabs were invisible, it nevertheless itched the people there. The injury itself had occurred as a result of one of the largest human atrocities in history, and more than a half century it continued to fester. While the memorial honors those who were persecuted and killed, I could sense that many things remain hidden, buried deep in collective shadows. A Ukrainian friend of mine wrote, Last year I said that my work was and was never going to be about trauma. Not because there was no trauma, but because trauma discourse puts all the attention on the affected body instead of focusing the attention on the perpetrators of the crime. We are told that negative feelings, including trauma, depression, etc., are a personal responsibility. I want to object. If trauma happens in a relationship, then healing has to happen there as well. My grandfather, born in 1942, grew up on a farm in nearby Baldiski on the north coast of Estonia. He remembers helping his grandmother to load the horse carrier with fresh produce and selling it in the town. He also remembers the main street, which had a big well in the epicenter, where the inhabitants could get their water. He recalls a memory of jumping off the submarines belonging to the Soviet army into the sea at the harbor, along with other kids, during the summertime. The street is now covered up with various Stalinist apartment buildings, initially built for the military units. A year ago, my grandfather moved into one of those buildings, to even his own surprise. He had previously withdrawn from the town, prompted by the trauma of it getting sealed up due to political ambitions of the Soviet Union, and in support of local farmers violently expelled from their households. It seems as though my grandfather embodies a living archive of the site, an entry point to redraw one's focus, a collective wound of healing. The sea keeps an island warm in the autumn, knowledge inherited in my family, as well as at various coastal regions. Ideal time to dive down there to start mixing the dead zones stratified at the bottom of the seabed. It asks for erectness and strength, every sense of fluidity, abstractness, and therefore releasing the feminine or foreign that had been controlled and eliminated 
for centuries.